Hello there, my name's Bishop Michael and this reflection on Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday uh, is being brought to you on behalf of the thedisciplesofchrist.com Now, Maundy Thursday is a part of the Easter Tridium, the, the three days of Easter and it's really important to look at today in the light of the next two great festivities, Good Friday uh, and Easter Sunday. It, it, one acts as a commentary uh, on the other two, and so it goes round. And St John's Gospel, this, this event takes place on the Passover. And Jesus has been backwards and forwards to Jerusalem a number of times in this Gospel uh, for a number of festivities. But this particular Passover is his last Passover. And John has been building up to this moment uh, throughout the Gospel. Now, he situates it in the Passover because he wants to link what Jesus is doing uh, to the events of the Exodus. This is, if you like, a completion of the Exodus, not a second Exodus. Uh, it's a very different Exodus. Remember what that first Exodus was about. You have uh, the Hebrew people in, enslaved in Egypt. God, through Moses, leads them out of imprisonment and suffering and pain uh, through the Red Sea into the wilderness and then into the land uh, of overflowing with milk and honey, the land of Canaan. That saving process is, is a key part of who the Jews thought they were, understood who they were. It's the key to their spiritual lives. So John takes that setting and presents this Passover with Jesus as a completion of that first Passover. You understand Jesus in terms of the Exodus. And all through this gospel, uh, Jesus has been presenting, uh, John has been presenting Jesus as not a new Moses, but a bigger and better version of Moses. So Jesus and his disciples are, are here. In the back of our minds, we need to go right back to the beginning of the Gospel, to chapter 1, where, where John the Baptist sees Jesus coming along the road and he stands out and he points out to everyone, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. They're the two things that he now, as we get towards the end of the Gospel, that, that uh, the evangelist brings together uh, in the one image. This is the Lamb of God. The Passover lamb that has been sacrificed is now being replaced by this lamb of God. As the first lamb of God led to freedom, uh, to new life, to milk and honey, so this new lamb of God, this new Passover lamb, uh, has been sent by the Father to bring the people out of the slaveries uh, that hold them down and tie them back out of out of times of darkness and sorrow and pain and loss, uh, into a whole new world of, of milk and honey, but a different kind of milk and honey, an eternal milk and honey. So, so there's, there's the background. We have Jesus having been sent by the Father, preparing to return to the Father. And before he returns to the Father, he has this one last Passover meal with his disciples. John begins today's reading by saying, Jesus, no, it's time to return to the Father. And before he does that, he goes and does this. And what does he do? He takes off his garment, lays it to one side, puts an apron around his waist, kneels down and washes the feet of his disciples. Importantly for John's church, it's, it's that imagery that's so important. He didn't need to say Jesus took off his garment. He could have just said Jesus washed his feet. But the taking off and laying down is a key part of what we're celebrating over the next couple of days. Jesus takes off his cloak and lays it down. Jesus takes up his life and he lays it down. Here at the washing, he's laying it down so that he can serve his disciples. The master humbles himself to wash the feet of his disciples. But let's not forget the taking off 
and the laying down. That's an important part of the foundations. It's an important part of what he's going to insist on from his disciples. So he gets down and he washes the feet of the disciples and then he comes to Peter. This is another really important part of the message of today's feast because it's saying that you have a choice. God doesn't drag everyone into the kingdom and you know, threaten them that you must serve, you must be a disciple. It's an invitation. It's an invitation that has been prepared for by saying uh, it's about laying, taking off, laying aside, putting down. Now, do you want to be a disciple or not? That choice is so important. Easter is only going to be effective when we choose to allow God to have it change us, transform us. But when I say no, one of the points he's making is if you say yes, then be prepared to live the yes, not just say it. Of course, Peter said, oh, no, you can't do mine. Why? Well, I don't want you, God, you, I don't want you, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, to be doing things of which I don't approve. I'm, I'll follow you anywhere, Lord. I'm just going my way. I'll serve you anywhere, Lord, but not this way. Messiahs don't wash servants' feet. And of course, that's half the struggle. Peter's been like that all through, the, all through this gospel. The other disciples, uh, the Jews, the Samaritan woman, uh, the crowds, uh, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Levites, the Romans, they all misunderstand this. They, they cannot understand why God would do things in this way. And because they don't understand it, because it makes no sense to them on a human level, they reject what God is offering. Having pointed it out to Peter, uh, Peter then changes his tune and says, well, well wash me all over. Uh, no, no, Peter, don't go overboard. What you need is a yes. But let your yes be yes. So Peter washes, or Jesus washes Peter's feet and the feet of the other disciples. And then the rest of the, the gospel will move into that last supper uh, teaching period when Jesus lays down lots of, of consequences of saying yes to him. But this is how it works. The Father sent the Son into the world. Why? So that people could have forgiveness of sins and be able to have a whole new life. Milk and honey, if you like. The Father sent the Son to lead the whole of creation into a world that was set up at the first day of creation, when God began to create. The Son obeyed the Father. Now the Son is returning to the Father. The first line of today's Gospel says that. The Son knows it's time to return to the Father. Why would he return to the Father? Because his work is done. John says he can return to the Father now because in the death and resurrection of the Son, the Father's goals have been achieved. Salvation is ours. New life is ours. Freedom is ours. But it's about making that choice that, with which Peter struggled. Yes, Lord, wash my feet. Yes, Lord, I need. Yes, Lord, I will go your way, not my way. It's about choices. And all through John's Gospel, it's been about a choice between, uh, on one side, light and life, on the other side, uh, death and darkness. There's a struggle all the way through between uh, something that God is offering that endures beyond this world, transforms our life in this world, makes us more, more fully human, more fully alive, but continues on beyond the grave uh, into an eternal home, the milk and honey of eternity. If you like, a return back to that paradise, that, that original Garden of Eden where men and women were one together and God was in the midst. On the other side, you have the baubles of the world. You have, you have uh, uh, humanity, the world, as presented by the Romans. Strength, power, might, privilege, uh, honour, pride. Look at me, look at me. You have, you have the wealth of the world. You have the leaders of the Jews saying that religion is the answer. 
look at the way we do our religion thing. This is the way. You've got your laws, you've got your obedience, you've got your interpretations, you've got your sects, you've got your groups, you've got all these little things in religion. That's the answer. Jesus is saying, religion is not the answer, it's faith. It's living my way. Not religion, not, not religion way. That's what's killed you. We have the way of the masses. I don't care. Here, today, gone, tomorrow, what's the matter? As we move into the rest of Easter, we're, <laughs> we're invited to, to begin to make some choices. What is our role on this world? Why are we here? What happens when we die? What's our relationship to all these other people? From where do we come to where do we go? What's our responsibility for the poor, the suffering, the marginalised, the outcast? All these answers... Uh, and answer to all the other challenges we have are, are found in this day and the next two days. God sent the Father to give us something. His loving mercy. The Father sent the Son to show us the way. The Son showed us the way. Humility, obedience, self-sacrifice, Generous love. The death and resurrection of Christ changed the world. We can experience it, live it, share it when we choose to follow that way. And then when we allow God to do to us and through us what God wants. Amen. Thank you.